Hey, I'm Matt Bomer, and welcome to this Gold Meets Gold in event benefiting Angel City Sports. Hello, everyone. This is Tatiana McFadden. I am so honored to be part of Team Deloitte, who is helping me get ready for the Tokyo Games this summer. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Huge fan. Same, same. Good to see you again. Thank I you. Gold Meets Gold in events maybe, gosh, two years ago. Long time. <laughs> And Me I feel too. like I, 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 I've been close to you because I just watched the Rising Phoenix documentary on Netflix, which was mind blowing and so inspiring and oh. moving. And I was crying and laughing and inspired. Uh, it's what an amazing story. Thank you. I am so happy that you you watched that. Like everything else you've attempted and overcome in your life, you pretty much did an phenomenal, unbelievable job on the film. So congratulations. And Thank I you. And for anyone, if you're watching this, please watch that documentary. It's essential viewing, really. I don't have any background in acting, in producing, in doing anything with movies, but I do have a voice. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that the Paralympic story was going to be told in a certain way. Um, because I feel like society has this like visual of what disability is and what it means. I'm so happy that you watched it. My, my favorite thing that was said on that documentary, uh, one of the athletes said, uh, the Olympics are where heroes are born. The Paralympics are where heroes come to compete. And yep. it, it's a bold statement, but it's backed up so much by the stories of these athletes and and, and th their stories leading up to the games and then how phenomenally they're able to compete in these games. And the, the stadiums are packed. Yeah. London was, I mean, insane. Are you looking forward to the same in Tokyo? What's the situation there? Uh, when is that? Well, <laughs> well in Tokyo, um, we're not gonna have um, spectators, like foreign spectators come in to watch. So it will be a little quieter games. Um, but I am looking forward to competing against because I really do believe that sports bring the world together. It's a weird time, but I've been really lucky and really fortunate to have stayed so healthy and to get outside and to continue my training. So um, when it's go time, I'll be ready. <laughs> ready, I know you will. I, I feel like, you know, as an actor, I know you're training all the time. And, and so it's just such a mindset you can get on not autopilot, but it can just take up so much of your life. And as an actor, if you're fortunate enough to work, you can be going from set to set. And this year has allowed me time to actually breathe and reset in some ways. And if there's any silver lining, it's been that I've had this great uh, unobstructed time with my family. Um, yeah. have, have you had any moments like that where you've you've been able to take a little break from training and had any reflections or insights? Yeah, so yeah, much like an actor, you are always on the go and you know your schedule pretty much in a year or two advance. So we're the same way. I do about four to six major marathons a year. So I do Boston, London, New York, Chicago, Tokyo, and Berlin. But it's also been really nice to kind of um, to take the time to like slow down. <laughs> it's probably like acting. You just keep adding on shows and movies and you create this wonderful job for yourself. You know, that's like doing a, a five act Shakespeare play over and over again though. You know, I mean, sometimes when you're on set, it's kind of like little sprints. You do a take, they don't usually last longer than a minute or two at the most. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's amazing. What an incredible story. Do you, you know, I think there are similarities. And one of the things I love, first of all, I don't know if they told you, but I, I'm a huge fan of the Olympics. So gold meets oh, gold yeah. is such an amazing opportunity for me because I get to go and be the fan and ask people about their stories. And there are so many commonalities because uh, when you're an athlete and when you're an actor, I feel like you work so hard, you pour so much of your life and your soul into your dream. And sometimes it can go down to one moment. Um, and, you know, as actors, I feel like we have a little bit of, uh, you know, leeway because I mean, 
you get more auditions, hope, hopefully, or, you know, maybe you'll get more than one take on a set. But it is that one moment. And especially in the Olympics, in the Paralympics, you get that one moment when they, when they, you know, fight whatever they call that electric gun, I would say fire a shot. <laughs> yep. What do you, I mean, and you don't have to give away any trade secrets, but what are you telling yourself in that moment? What are you, are you trying to just be as clear headed and open as possible? Or is there like a mantra you're repeating? Yeah, so I think I'm just so thankful for just being there and getting to do what I do. So I don't know if you know like a little bit about my story, but I was adopted mm -hmm. um, by two wonderful moms. Um, and my mom was actually on a work trip um, to Russia. So she ran an, she ran um, an agency called ICA International Children's Alliance. And during the time that I was born in 89 was the fall of communism. And being born with a disability, that was like absolutely like a no-no. I got around by scooting around, by crawling around. Uh, my parents put me into a local sports program called the Bennett Blazers. And that's where I tried everything, ice hockey, downhill skiing, wheelchair basketball. And finally I tried wheelchair racing and I loved it. And what I noticed about being in that sports program was that I was getting healthier, right? Not only physically, but mentally. So that's why I love being part of Angel City Sports. And that's why I love sharing my story and being an advocate because the more youth we can get involved, I mean, LA is hosting the Olympics. <laughs> we need those 10 year olds right now because they're going to be 18. Um, that's what I think about <laughs> on that starting line. How did you choose um, to become an actor? I mean, you, obviously we all can be anything that we want to be. Um, well, I was a, a very much an outdoors oriented kid growing up and I was really into sports. My father was a professional athlete for a brief period of time. So we were really encouraged. Um, I think it's probably one of the reasons why I, I love the Olympics so much. It was such a huge moment for our family. Um, yeah four years, particularly this summer Olympics, because we were off school and uh, it was a time when we were all together as a family, as fans. Um, so, and, and having grown up participating in a lot of different sports, I think that's one of, one of the reasons I, I appreciate what uh, Paralympic and Olympic athletes are able to achieve. I'd always loved movies as a kid. I'd had a, a really active imagination. I'd actually been very shy. I'm still a pretty shy uh, person. Really? I can tell. <laughs> well, I've, I'm, I'm working on it. So they had this elective and I saw, I had this great teacher who I saw, who taught us improv and I saw her get up on, on stage and do this really funny improv. And I thought, oh my gosh, that looks like so much fun. And I just took to it. I love what I do. I'm very obsessed in a good way. I don't know if you feel the same about acting and... And I get total tunnel vision. I have to remind myself to pop out of it and, and engage with my family. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, wait, let me pop out of the <laughs> white collar season and <laughs> focus on my family. <laughs> okay, so obviously we have some similarities um, in love and passion. Mine is, you know, for, uh, for racing, yours is in acting. Um, what are your some of your favorite roles and why oh wow you know it's, it goes back to what you said you become so obsessive that hopefully whatever you're working on is your favorite role at that time um and you never know how it's going to land in the zeitgeist or you know so uh it really i try to make it it doesn't always work out that way <laughs> but i try to make it whatever i'm working on at the time sort of like uh, you know, whatever race you're probably working on at the time, you're focused in on this, on the strategy for that race, what your mindset's going to be when you're there, but also be open and available to the moment should something happen during the race. So I, I really feel like I try to, um, uh, be obsessive about it in a way that makes whatever I'm working on, um, my favorite thing. 
And do you have like a specific, just that one movie or a show that you were like, I was made for this and it like changed your life completely? Well, I think it would have to be white collar because it's still a job. I mean, I think we started that, I think I did the pilot for that in um, 2008. And it's still a job that people uh, want to stop me on the street and talk about or tell. It, it's funny because, you know, it was the best cast and the, and the best group imaginable, which I think goes such a long way in the overall experience. Um, we had so much fun together on that oh. show. It's really like a family. I don't know if I could do that. I would like shy away and be like, don't look at me. <laughs> so it's amazing talent that you, you have. I think he'd be great. You know, it's so good because we complicate we complicate it in so many ways, and there are so many ways we have to techniques and things we have to use to get around to it, especially when there are lights and cameras in your face. And um, but it's really just about imagination, ultimately. You know. So Tatiana, tell us about Angel City Sports, and, and they do so many incredible things um, for for our youth. Tell can you tell us a bit about them and what they do? Yeah, I'm, it's awesome how Angel City Sports is tied to the Gold Meets Golden because it's such a great opportunity for people to see what Paralympic athletes do. For me, I feel like if I didn't have that youth program, I wouldn't be confident in myself. You know, I wouldn't really appreciate for the person I am. Um, I think I would be so stuck into, well, why was I made this way or why did this happen? And I really feel like if we can change the shape of the world into sports, um, where we can change the equality in sports, we can change the equality elsewhere. Tatiana, I look forward to giving you a big hug when I see you in person again. And I know it may be a little quieter in the stands in this particular Olympics, but I hope you know that I will be cheering extra hard for you from home when I'm watching and cheering you on. Thank you.